This is Cold War Conversations. If you're new here, you've come to the right place to listen to first-hand Cold War history accounts. Do make sure you follow us in your podcast app or join our emailing list at coldwarconversations.com. Born in 1968 in East Germany, Thomas had a normal socialist but happy childhood in a small town near Dresden. His family was viewed as exotic at the time as his mother had Hungarian citizenship which allowed her to travel to West Berlin. Thomas was conscripted into the East German Army aged 18. He signed up for three years as a non-commissioned officer instead of the one and a half years of compulsory service. After training he's posted to a radio reconnaissance battalion based on top of a mountain in the middle of nowhere near the inner German border. The unit was tasked with monitoring NATO surface-to-air missile batteries such as Patriots and Nike Hercules, tracking NATO air traffic in Western Europe and listening to -to air-to-ground transmissions. Thomas describes the isolated life on the mountain and the harsh winters with lots of snow. The base was protected with a high-voltage double fence and sentries, but with good visibility Thomas could see the enemy in a similar mountaintop monitoring station on the other side of the border. I'm delighted to welcome Thomas to our Cold War conversation. I was born in 68 in uh, East Germany and uh, raised up in a little town near Dresden. The town is called Pirna. In, uh, I guess you, you heard about that, uh, the, <laughs> the well-known Tal der Ahnungslosen, uh, the, valley, the Valley of the Clueless. I mean, actually, we were not so clueless, but uh, at least we didn't receive any any Western TV stations or radio stations. So I was raised uh, yeah, with a nice family. Uh, my mother, my, my, my father, my five-year younger brother. Let's put it in that way. I had a really typical, normal, uh, yeah, socialist uh, childhood, teenagerhood, went to school. Uh, to the to the yeah, mandatory ten class school and uh, yeah after then uh, I moved to to the high school I was part or I was member of all these kind of, of organization that we had in the in the in the GDR we got plenty of them so typical typical normal childhood what were your parents views on the East German government my mother she's Hungarian she's from Hungary. She uh, felt in love with my with my with my dad. So and then they decided to 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 move uh, or to to uh, build the life up in in East Germany, in Saxony. And so my mother is uh, Hungarian born, and she never applied or she never uh, had the, the the German citizen citizenship up to up to to the day. She always uh, hold the the Hungarian citizenship. And um, my my father he he was born in the in the region so he's 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 my German part and um, my mother I mean she was a teacher or yeah she was a teacher for for Russian language and arts in school and uh, my father he he was an engineer worked as a in a leading position or he was he was the, the general manager of a smaller company close to where we lived or 20 kilometers and uh, they were producing galvanized uh, band steel huh? and actually i mean yeah none of of my relatives uh, also not my my parents they were in the in the sed in the and i remember i mean they we were told okay what happens in the apartment stays in the apartment so meaning you go out and uh, you don't talk about what you have heard what you have listened to. So uh, at the beginning, I said we had no no uh, reception of any any Western TV, which is correct because there was simply no no signal there. But on uh, short wave, we, we we listened to to Grias, uh, the, the the Berlin radio. But unfortunately, at the, or Deutschlandfunk, unfortunately at, at that time, uh, not the music channels, which I was interested in. Just the the, the 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 info or the the, the information channels, and uh, you can imagine as a as a teenager, you are not very interested in in any uh, uh, broadcasting of uh, Bundestag's uh, 
uh, or parliament uh, sessions. So, uh, yeah, that's it. And I, I guess not being members of the party limited your parents' career aspirations. Yeah, actually, yes. Uh, I said my, my father, he was a, a director, general manager of that company. And this was a, a company till the mid-70s. It was a private company. And then in the mid-70s, there was the last wave of national, nationalization of the remaining private companies in the, in the GDR. And uh, and then he stayed for a couple of years as, as the general manager, but then he was, uh, yeah, he was degraded or let's say another guy came with the, with the right party book in the, in the, in the pocket and uh, in line. And uh, yeah, that, yeah, that was a cut for him. And what, what sort of accommodation were you living in? In East Germany. <laughs> also typical in uh, Neubau, uh, in these unified apartment blocks. Huh? Big blocks, I mean, not, not story-wise. So we were living in a, in a five-story apartment blocks, but in, an, uh, in, an, in a quarter which was built, mainly built for mine workers working close by in, in this uh, uh, Soviet-German joint venture, Wismut, where they dig for, for uranium. Huh? So, and uh, this was the neighborhood. I mean, we had big, big buildings, seven, uh, seven uh, stories high. So, and I don't know, let's say 5,000, 6,000 people. So not, not, not a very big uh, uh, area, but, but uh, yeah. So typical three rooms apartment. Uh, I mean, we moved there in 74, shortly be before, I came to school. I mean, that was a big step forward. Huh? Before we were living with a, with a, with a, with the toilet outside. Huh? Now we had running water. We had toilet inside, heating, and so on. So, but uh, being with with your brother in in just a little tiny uh, 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 kids' room, yeah. I mean, it requires a lot of how to say empathy, compromise, <laughs> yeah, compromise. Yeah. What was your uh, schooling like? What was your favorite subject, Thomas, in school? Uh, actually, I always was interested in, 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 in the scientific uh, subjects, um, uh, physics, chemistry, biology. I also liked the, 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 the languages. I mean, uh, it was mandatory from the fifth class that, that we had to learn Russian. And then you were able to choose uh, from uh, in the seventh class with uh, 14 to learn another language, so and and most of us, I mean, who were willing, they 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 uh, voted for uh, English. I don't remember if, if French was was possible. Uh, it always depended a little bit on the school. In in our in our quarter, we had four schools, huh? and they were all full. And so I I learned English. So this was my 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 favorite, and yeah, and 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 the science subjects. Did many people want to learn English or, or not? I mean, as far as I remember, you needed to be selected. Huh? You said, okay, I'm, I like to learn, but not everybody was, uh, was allowed to learn. Huh? So, and I guess pff, out, of, out of a class with 30, 30 pupils, five, six, seven uh, were allowed to learn English. I mean, it depended a little bit on, on the grades, but uh, not, not everybody. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess it, it came in useful in your later career. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, let's let's put it in that way. Yeah. 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 So um, Marxism and Leninism wasn't um, one of your favorites then? No, not really. Not really. Because, I mean, this is, I mean, you heard it. Uh, I, I listened to some, some other guys in your podcast. I mean, this is really try stuff. Huh? This is just... Uh, uh, Trying to learn it somehow, repeating it, and uh, and answering what what the teachers wanted to hear. That's that's that was the exercise. Huh? And actually, I mean, pff, really try stuff. Even if you try to to get the intellectual point of that, it's pff, it's tough. And uh, I actually I I didn't like it. And and at the end of the day, it was just about this this period of uh, let's say before the war. And then the, the the great socialist movement, blah blah. Of course, a little bit Marx, but but uh, he he put it a theoretics for our great socialist society. Huh? And uh, yeah, and then you compare. Okay, okay, what what do we have here? 
is it really what what he wanted is it really the the core so no, some some doubts raised up huh? yeah and i guess there were other subjects that were sort of influenced by the politics as well i'm presuming history was yeah, very much yeah, from yeah. a socialist viewpoint indeed indeed i i, I still have some some uh, encyclopedia encyclopedia books uh, at home from from gdr time and if you now read uh, some historical moments or some historical events from the view that we had at that time i mean in in some cases it's really black and white huh? it's, it's completely different what we are what we know today huh? yeah and of course i mean and then later on i realized the, the, uh, from from the old german historics from the 16 15 16 70s I don't really know. Uh, don't know much. Huh? I mean, we were really focused on on that period after the war. Huh? So you you mentioned earlier about some of the organisations you you had to join, but I was going to ask you: Did you do much sport at school? Yeah, I did. I did uh, pretty pretty frequently, and um, so I did uh, track and field. So I went for training almost every day. Let's say uh, four times a week for sure. On weekend we had, we had competitions almost every weekend, and uh, so I traveled around with my with my sport uh, sport mates, and uh, I mean we had a lot of fun. It it was nice. You were exercising, and uh, long jump, high jump, hurdles, whatever. So, and uh, to be honest, I was not the best, but I enjoyed it. Huh? That that was really nice, and 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 you had a good uh, comradeship with, uh, with with sport mates and. I mean, you took part in in the competition, so that was really, really a nice, nice hobby. They weren't testing out any funny pills on you or anything like. No, that. no, no, no. I, <laughs> no, no. I was not not as good like that. Um, but of course, I mean, there there was. I mean, it was not just for fun. For me, it was fun. But there there there, there was, this, uh, of course, there the uh, designated uh, system behind. Huh? To develop the sports, uh, the, the the kids, and of course, I had uh, uh, mates which were really good, and then they they went on to the to the uh, Sportschule and so on, and always with the goal: okay, uh, someday you can take part in the Olympics. Huh? Or you, not for me. And what about um, sort of like pre-military training? Did you? What age were you uh, involved in that? Yeah, I mean, we, we had we had a subject which called uh, which was called uh, Wehrkundeunterricht, where where we learned, let's say, the basics of of the military. So, and actually, for instance, in sports, huh, I mean, we didn't just throw balls; we we we, we throw hand grenades, of course, fake hand grenades. But uh, the 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 the, you know, the old German ones, uh, the, the the long ones and and these these uh, pineapple stick and stick grenades the, the stick yeah. grenades and and these yeah. these sort of pineapple uh, grenades so this was typical i mean and and we didn't thought about huh? i mean for us this was just like a ball huh? but but then you can see i mean you know, how does it come that that you throw hand grenades with 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 11 or 12 years old yeah and then then we had this um uh, when i was 14 or 15 i don't remember right uh, there was one week of a, such a sort of pre-military camp huh, where we were. Um, this was mandatory for all the boys. At the same time, the, the 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 girls stayed at school and they did some some first aid courses and so on. But we spent one really one week in a, in a camp, which was guard, guarded. Got uniforms. Uh, got uh, got uniform hats. Uh, were supervised by real uh, NVR officers, and yeah, and got a glimpse of what the military drill is. Huh? And uh, I mean, with fourteen, fifteen, yeah, I mean it's like sort of adventure fun. But we also shot. Uh, uh, we were also shooting with with real weapons. Don't remember if it was Kalashnikov or a lighter weapon, and uh, yeah, basic drill, marching, robbing. Uh, uh, putting on NBC sweet suits, gas mask, and so on. It's fourteen. Huh? Uh, always remember, it's fourteen. So it's sort of like playing at being soldiers. Yeah, yeah, sort of like that. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, but sort of getting camouflaging the... and so on tactics and no. <laughs> At this point, what are you thinking you're going to do when you leave school? What what sort of career are you looking towards? Yeah, uh, I always wanted to study medicine. Huh? My my granddad, he he was a doctor, and uh, he always was a sort of role model for, for for me. And I wanted to be like him. Huh? So that was always for me pretty clear that I that I uh, want to study medicine in GDR. You had to decide which way you you will go f- later on with 14, 15, 16. I don't remember right, but at, at a pretty early stage. Huh? And nowadays with 16 or 15, what do you know? What what do you want to become later on if you're not really a freak? So uh, I always wanted to study medicine. And um, and from that moment when 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 I told that, it was clear that with the the, um, the compulsory one and a half year army service, there's no chance to get any uh, uh, to get any study place. So it was more or less clear that you had to sign in for a longer army service uh, as an NCO for three years. So the double of one and a half years. And uh, so that that was always clear. And to be honest, I, I also didn't hesitate to to go that step. So. I signed in with, with 16 so or 17, it was clear. Uh, but then I didn't get this uh, medicine study. So, and uh, um, I, was, uh, I was denied in, in the 11th or 12th class. So <laughs> it was clear, okay, I, I already signed in. I cannot sign, sign out, but I don't get, uh, I don't get the, the, the medicine study. So, and then I thought, okay, um, I always was interested in chemistry, so let's try chemistry huh? and uh, apply for a chemistry study. So I did. It was not easy because this was going via um, via a partner factory where we had some some uh, some apprenticeship before. So they they assisted me, they they supported me, and uh, but I. <laughs> In this factory, I had to sign in that after the study, I will work for at least three years in that factory, which never happened, fortunately, because it was a messed up factory. And uh, but anyhow, that's uh, that's a story or what what I wanted to become when I was a teenager. And what what did your parents think of you signing up for the three years? I don't remember if they were. I guess they were not really happy because having the son in uh, three years in, in 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 this East German army, I don't know. And uh, but anyhow, they supported me always in 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 the way that that I decided or I wanted. So they did they didn't say no. And what was your view of the East German system at this point? You know, you, you're obviously being indoctrinated through the school. To be honest, from I mean, nowadays, if you look back, I mean, many things get really clearer, or uh, and then you wonder why didn't I ask that and uh, and so on. But but the times are different. Huh? To be honest, I I never really questioned uh, the the system, huh? and uh, because it was normal, you, you were flowing in Rome, do as the Romans do. I would say. So, but of course, there there were some some moments uh, where I thought, Phew, uh, I mean, this is theory. That is what what they are telling us. But I have another experience. Just to give a couple of examples, I, I said my mother is from Hungary, so we we frequently went went to Hungary to visit my grand uh, my grandparents at least once a year or twice a year, which at that time was a big deal because not everybody was was traveling. So and then then we 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 were there on vacation also on the on the, on the Balaton Lake or we, we had a camping trailer so we went there and of course that at that time there were a lot of West Germans or, or Western tourists in in uh, in Hungary because Hungary always was the window to the West at least for for us um, we had much more things to buy much more Western stuff in the in the shops and so on so. Uh, and of course, we, we we got in contact with uh, with these 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 Western guys. We made friendship on the camp on the campground. I mean, you have to, you are living next to next. Huh? What I wanted to say is, um, 
I was 16 when with two friends of mine, we, we went by bicycle from, from, from our home to, to Hungary all the way with, with simple bicycles. And, and then, of course, we, we, we met uh, other bicyclists uh, from, from West Germany with, with fancy, nice uh, bikes with uh, 10 gear shifts. And I mean, we, we, we had three, three shifts if we were lucky. So anyhow, and, uh, and then, uh, one day, the, uh, I don't remember if it was a uh, West German guy or French or whatever, he showed me his passport. Huh? And then I was I was scrolling through the passport and just uh, already on the first page, I read valid for all countries. And I said, wow, what does it mean, valid for all countries? And he said, well, valid for all countries. And uh, yeah, what, what do you mean, valid for all countries? Yeah, valid for all countries. And I, I asked, I mean, you, you can you just go to to the US and uh, yeah 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 can you just go to Spain yeah 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 can you just go to to Romania yeah if they let me in yes and then 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 I was was challenging the the, the bad countries of that time can you go to Chile yeah can you go to South Africa yeah so this was really an, a remarkable because I mean we 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 even didn't have any passport at that time we just had uh, our ID. And uh, going to Hungary, we had we had to apply to go out of East Germany to go to Hungary. So the the, the only countries at that time were uh, Czechoslovakia and Poland, where we were able to go without any any registration. And later on in the in the in the eighties with the Solidarność movement, they closed Poland also. So the only country where we were able to go was just Czechoslovakia. And for the others, we had to apply for for a visa. An out outgoing or emigration visa, yeah. That that was that was uh, remarkable. And then then you realize on that campground, okay, you have this this West German families, three four kids, big big car, big trailer, and uh, yeah, and then pff, living like the kings because the exchange rate on the black market was pff, yeah really good for them. And uh, and then you were told at home. Yeah, they, they, they are living, there is poorness in, in West Germany. The bread is 10 times uh, more expensive than, 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 than in, in the GDR. Um, there's homeless, um, there is unemployment, people are suffering. And uh, actually, yeah, you see, socialist is winning. I mean, we are not yet there, but, uh, but wait a moment. And a couple of years later, we will, we will overrule the, 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 the capitalism. Huh? This, this for sure was a, was a remarkable moment, uh, which triggered something. Huh? Another moment was, uh, um, I mean, my mother as Hungarian cit uh, citizens, she, 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 the Hungarians were always allowed to, to go to West. Huh? I also have to say, we, we didn't have any, any relatives in, in, in West Germany. We are Hungary. We, we, we had some friends uh, which sent some parcels for, for Christmas, nothing special. Of course, always a highlight with some some secondhand clothes. But but at the end, we, we didn't have any any best best money, and uh, so my my mother tried from time to time to 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 change some some money on the black market for a pretty bad course. Uh, and she said, okay, I like to go uh, uh, to West Berlin just for windows shopping. Huh? And, I mean, she was able to. Why not? Huh? So we brought her to Berlin. We brought her to the to the to the border station Friedrichstraße, this famous uh, Tränenpalast, Palace of the Tears, and uh, yeah, we, we we brought her there, and then we just said, yeah, bye bye, mom. Uh, can you bring me a can of Coke? That would be great. And uh, yeah, and then she was in West Berlin, came back completely impressed, of course, and uh, yeah, and we knew. For us, no chance. I mean, just a couple of meters, one kilometer, just step into the train, go to West Berlin, coming back, no chance at all. That must be bizarre. Like, your mum can cross just a few hundred yards and be in a completely different country, and absolutely, you can't. Yeah, And you know she's still in the same city, just behind the wall. I mean, and you cannot cross this wall. And until you, you turn 65 and get retired. And that, of course, also triggered something because I said, okay, there's no, no, <laughs> no real legal or there's no way 
to to go to Paris, to go to West Berlin, to go there, there, there. Uh, so I need a job where maybe I can go to a conference or whatever if I'm getting invited. So and uh, yeah, and my my father actually he, he had the same experience. I mean. Uh, uh, in in the eighties, uh, I mean, because the the the, the, the factory was pretty out outdated, so they got money, or the the, the government decided, or uh, uh, to 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 uh, modernize the, the, the factory, and um, and this was done by by West German and Austrian uh, companies. So he was in, in in West Germany and Austria a couple of times, and uh, so he also knew how the West looks like, and I mean. Uh, just a side story, of course, when he came back and during the night by train and, and we were so excited because in the morning we stood up and then then he got a matchbox. Huh? I mean, that for me was a big deal, but not the small ones, but the king size ones. Huh? And uh, I mean, pff, I, I really was freaking out. Yeah, what was the question? By the way, yeah, no, no. They, these are it, it was. Uh, I can't remember what the question was. I was just enjoying your reminiscing. Um, and uh, yeah, to continue, I mean, uh, I mean, looking back so many years uh, back, I mean, and, and in preparation of this interview, I I thought about you know what were remarkable moments, but there were these 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 little moments. Huh? So, for instance, one, I said I was keen on Matchbox, huh? and uh, one of the the little highlights were when my mother uh, changed on the black market some 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 D mark. And then we went to an inter shop huh? once a year or twice a year. So, and uh, each of us uh, could choose for a matchbox or a mini puzzle, whatever, or, or a surprise egg. Huh? So, and yeah, we were happy with that. Huh? What what I always had were were Mickey Mouse journals or uh, um, Fix and Foxy or later on Bravo, which we got from Hungarian friends. Huh? My my parents they had a lot of Hungarian friends and 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 they were really well stuffed with with uh, Western publication huh? for the kids Mickey Mouse Bravo the National Geographic also very remarkable for me seeing this this bookshelf with this nice yellow uh, covers and um, so I always I always got this 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 uh, used Mickey Mouse's we smuggled it back and in these. Uh, um, Mickey Mouse uh, uh, magazines, or uh, you had this advertisement, for instance, for, for Matchbox. And then in the advertisement, if you want the, the, the newest catalog, these, these little pocket size uh, Matchbox catalog, send in to Mark 50 uh, in, in, in stamps and, and we will send it to you. Hmm. Okay. So, first question uh, where to get uh, 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 West German stamps versus to Mark 50? Hmm. The second, I mean, pretty sure if they send the, the Matchbox catalog to my home address, it will be kept by the Stasi or whoever. So, and then I was going around in the in the in the, in the neighborhood pretending that I'm a big collector of stamps and asking for the for the envelopes. Huh? So I got a lot of envelopes uh, with a lot of with with East German stamps, but there were some with with West German stamps, and surprisingly, they were not stamped. So it took me couple of months to collect unstamped stamps <laughs> worth two, two Deutschmark uh, 50. And uh, and then I sent a letter from Hungary to this Matchbox address asking, Here's, here are my stamps. I would be really happy if you can send me the Matchbox to my uh, Hungarian grandparents' address. And yeah, and actually it happened. Huh? A couple of months later, I came to, to to Budapest again and found this Matchbox catalog with a sticker as a as a as a bonus. Huh? So brilliant, brilliant! I love your um, your entrepreneurial way of uh, getting hold of the uh, the West German stamps. Uh, yeah, very, yeah. very impressed. Very. Impressed. I mean, we were all we were always collecting when we were when we were young. We were always collecting uh, class uh, paper. Uh, 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 rub, no, not rubbish, but but uh, metals, which we brought to the central collecting station, where we got some some money for it. Huh? Yeah, I mean, East Germany was a little bit ahead of the game as far as recycling. Uh, uh, definitely was concerned. Much, more, let's say, much more sustainable. Huh? If you if you look from that uh, from that point, 
uh, yeah, sustainability. I mean, that didn't exist, the word, but we used the things many times and we repaired a lot because we, we weren't able to simply rebuy anything. Huh? If something was broken, you had to repair it. Otherwise, it was simpler times when things were probably easier to repair because you didn't have microchips in them and and, yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, but somebody did send me a photo. They posted a photo the other day. I think it was on our Facebook group um, where they'd got an East German coffee grinder that still worked. Yeah. I mean, I immediately recognized this one because almost everybody had it. I mean, that's that's the point. If there was a grinder, there was just one type and everybody got this. and uh, Or some kind of toys or, or even, even clothing. Huh? I mean, if there was a, a fancy fashion jacket affordable jacket everybody had it <laughs> at least 50 percent in the school huh? and uh, yeah but but this was this is another thing huh? i mean sport shoes for instance um uh, surprisingly we were provided with adidas uh, sport shoes uh, in in our sports club i don't know i mean i guess they were produced in east germany but they they fell off the of the of the of the uh, train or of the lorry and uh, but but sport shoes or modern shoes, this was always an issue. Huh? And uh, and we were pretty uh, living pretty close to the to the Czech border, so we we frequently went there. Later on, when we had uh, mopeds, we went we went by moped and uh, were trying to buy things which were not available in, in in East Germany. And the Czechs came over and they bought things that were not available in in in, in Czechoslovakia. And uh, so they had. Better shoe, better sport shoes, uh, better camping gear. So, uh, but this this meant you had to to save the money because we were only allowed to to say uh, to to change a certain amount of money per day. So, you 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 went there frequently, didn't spend anything. Then uh, after ten times, you had enough money for buying uh, a tent or whatever or a, a backpack. And but this meant you needed. To smuggle it, huh? and uh, yeah, I remember one day. I mean, we went by train, and uh, the train was stopping at the border station, and then uh, border police came in, and then they were really shell or uh, shouting and yelling, "Everybody, get out of the train and move to the next wagon and whatever." So I don't know what what happened there, and then <laughs> uh, yeah, I couldn't hold on me, and then I said, "I," sh and pretty loudly to one guy, I mean. I feel like uh, like being an animal because you treat like you, you you're yelling to us like an animal. Oops. I, so they immediately put me into into a compartment and then then uh, yeah I got naked huh and then they really searched me so I had to 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 uh, dress off uh, just uh, <laughs> being half naked and then then they found I don't know where's hundred marks the 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 Czech crowns. And uh, yeah, and then they sent me back, and then then I got a got a fine. It was it was reported to the school because it was an, an violation against the valuta laws, blah blah blah. So, this seventeen, huh? and uh, I mean these were the moments where you, where you thought, hmm, I mean what they are doing. I mean I I didn't do anything wrong. Huh? I just wanted to buy a, a backpack which is more expensive than a daily exchange. And uh, and then you realize there's there's something wrong with the state, huh? Or the feeling when you are coming back. Normally, you, when you are coming back to your home country, you are happy because it's your home country. We were coming back, queuing up in, in, in at the border, and and always being afraid that they that they really uh, 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 let us wait there, or they they search the car, they 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 uh, they disassemble the car dismantled the car to search anything for, for, for these Mickey Mouse magazines, which they found once. And of course they took it. And so a really rare feeling coming back to your home country and, and being treated like, like a criminal or having a bad feeling. And this, I have to say, really hurt it huh? uh, at that time. It was strange. I mean, did you ever think of trying to escape or leave illegally? <laughs> Not at that time. I mean, if you're if you're if you're a student or pupil, uh, you don't think about that. Uh, 
because you really don't have to suffer suffer from from anything. And um, I mean, the next time during the army, uh, it was never an option because um, uh, for me it was it was pretty clear if if even if I could find a way to to escape as a soldier, I never were able to to come back to to, to see my parents because you are just deserting. Huh? And uh, so this this never was an option. And um, I remember that um, when when we were finished the school with eighteen, we were hitchhiking to to Bulgaria, or taking the train through Romania, and then hitchhiking for many weeks in in Bulgaria. And then we also went to the to the south border, uh, close to to Greece, because we had we we, we had some or we, we we heard some rumors there were guys. That that were going from this campground over the green border, and then they made it to the to the Mount uh, Olymp Mount, huh? going up, being in Greece, and then coming back, or just uh, going, uh, just escaping. Huh? So there were rumors, and we were close to that uh, to that area, or close to the border. I don't know, ten kilometers, so pretty close on that campground. And uh, many many East Germans were on that campground, and. Uh, a strange atmosphere, a lot of alcohol, uh, uh, bone fires, and so on. And uh, and then one guy told me, "Listen, uh, watch out what you are saying. This campground is fully infiltrated by by Stasi." And uh, and then next day, then we realized, okay, there, there. I mean, there were not only young people; there were also middle-aged people at the time. I don't know, 30, 40, around, uh, trying to 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 get into con conversation and so but at the time i mean we had this rumors our oh, stasi is around but we had no clue what the stasi is really doing and uh, and to be honest it was it wasn't an option at that time to to escape and on top of that uh, i have to say um i mean this is for sure yeah part of the indoctrination or the Living in the in this valley of clueless, I thought, okay, you escape. Okay, what you you don't have any money, so okay, the first day you you may survive. Second day you need something to drink. Okay, there might be some water taps some around, but the third day you need you need to to eat something. But I don't have any money if I arrive in West Germany. How can I survive? And uh, so and we didn't know anything that that they have a social welfare system. Uh, also, and, and 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 subsidiaries and scholarships and so on. We didn't simply know that. I thought you go there, you have no money, and 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 in the, in, the, in the second week you are one of the homeless or one of the ones uh, who are who are dying just in a in a in a in a, in a restroom in a in a uh, department store with a golden shot of heroin, whatever. So this was the big, uh, uh, yeah, the, the nightmare or. The picture yeah. that was drawn pretty frequently by by the media, by the teachers, and so on. I have heard that before that that portrayal of the West. I mean, let's talk about your uh, drafting into the um, army. So, how, how does that work? You get a letter saying report here. Yeah, um, I mean, with sixteen, we had to 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 uh, to undergo a sort of assessment. A medical check and so on. At least you had a sort of choice. Huh? You had some 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 tick mark boxes and, uh, for instance, border border police or uh, Grenztruppen, uh, tank uh, tanks, infantry, radio, and so on. And uh, of course, I didn't I didn't tick mark the border because I never wanted to to end up at the border. Yeah, because I mean we just had the rumors. Border is not nice huh, being there, and I didn't want it to end end up in a in a in a tank, so I I cross marked uh, radio. So, and when I was sixteen, and uh, during this this pre military uh, courses, so I I also underwent a, a radio course where we learned how to Morse and so on. Finishing the school with eighteen in 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 summer, I had a nice summer. I was traveling a lot. Uh, uh, by the way, I went with my my parents. We went by by car uh, to the to the Russian Black Sea to to Sochi, huh? to the, the Caucasus. Wow. A long way to go by car on on pff, 
pretty dirty roads or unpaved roads. Uh, I mean, that was a big adventure at that time. What sort and, of car did you did you have? Uh, we had a Shiguli or a Lada. Call it the Lada. Okay. Okay, but, so you'd be all right for spares out there then. Yes, and uh, this Lada, when, when we went there, it was 87. We got this Lada in 75. And um, so it was already pretty old for people in with, with a lot of stuff and luggage and so on. So we, we somehow managed these these, pfft, uh, these terrible roads through, through Ukraine and Russia. And... Uh, uh, just another st- side story I remember when, when we went there. And uh, so the exhaust, the pipe exhaust, fall off, uh, poof, fall off, uh, big sound. Then we went to, to a service station. And, uh, and then they, they, were, they were lifting up the, the ladder, looking from beneath, and then they were gathering, the, and then they were shouting, and, and, and people were gathering around. And uh, I mean, my mother, she, she, uh, she then talked to them, and they said, it's look what the Germans do with our ladders. This ladder is 12 years old and from beneath it looks like new. <laughs> so, because yeah, everybody, I mean, you had to wait yeah, yeah. 15, 16, 17, 18 years for a car. Everybody was maintain, maintaining the, the, the car as best as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. That's incredible age for a car. Uh, and well, how was the Black Sea? Uh, it was amazing that the, 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 the I mean, the, the, the point is ev- everything had to be pre-booked. So we had a certain window when we were able to, or when, when we started in the morning, always in the morning. And then we were, we had to go 500, 400, 500 kilometers, which is long range for, for these, uh, for the, for the road conditions and, uh, and a certain window to arrive in the, in the, in the pre-booked hotel. And, uh, on this, on these four, 500 kilometers, we had to pass many of these, these, um, uh, traffic control stations. Huh? And they saw it. And then, then in the, in the back mirror, we saw, okay, they, they lifted up the, the phone and told, okay, this German, uh, Lada, which was announced passed. So, and, uh, and then on, uh, close to the, to the, to the Plexi, we, we looked at the map and, there was a detour which would save us 250 kilometers, but it was forbidden. So the, the route was pre-designed, and uh, and then we said, okay, uh, let's try it. And fortunately, our our license plate has a, had an Y and a an T at the beginning, and the Y in in Russia is the U. So, and we were going this this forbidden road, and 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 we also we saw this 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 uh, um, um, traffic traffic. Uh, Sentry there, and he didn't he didn't recognize that because he he was not waiting for us, huh? and I guess he thought okay this is a Russian a Russian la- la- uh, Lada with a U U T instead of a Y T, and uh, so okay anyhow, uh, and uh, yeah and then coming to to the Plexi it was a big complex a uh, big uh, holiday complex, I guess for for the nomenclature pretty modern uh, with with with. Um, uh, with um, uh, all you can eat uh, buffets, never have seen something like that. Big, big, uh, big hotel. But uh, we were not uh, uh, lodging in this hotel because we only got uh, two uh, Yugoslavian uh, uh, caravans. Huh? So around the hotel there was a campground. So uh, we we had two of these caravans where we where we lived for one week, which was nice. I mean. And so we enjoyed the, the Plexi very much. There was disco. I, I, uh, I got to know with quite a lot of Russians. And uh, I mean, it, I, I don't remember too much, but they, they were all uh, the, 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 the children from artists and uh, military and so on. And uh, I mean, we had a lot of fun. Then we did, made some day tours to the Caucasus, some organized day tours, and uh, to Sochi. This was the first time I saw palms. Huh? I mean, I never saw palms in my life. This was the first time in Sochi, with the subtropical climate, I saw palms. I mean, what? Pff, how amazing! Huh? I mean, you're yeah. freaking out. What the palm? <laughs> You'd always imagine you're in Los Angeles or somewhere. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> almost. <laughs> Almost, yeah, absolutely. 
<laughs> no, but it was was really nice. Okay, so I had a good uh, coming back to your question. I had a really nice summer, traveled a lot, and so on. And then it was clear the, I mean, the in in East Germany, the drafting was always twice a year in in spring and in in in, in autumn. And I was uh, the one uh, going in in or we were drafted in November. Yeah, you got a letter. Uh, uh, you got you got a train ticket and you uh, you have to to be there in time. Yeah, and then I went on train, uh, saying goodbye to to my parents. And then I mean the train was full full with 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 young young guys like me, with older guys because at the same time the reservists they were also drafted at the same day. So you had you had a big mixture, and of course they knew what what uh, they are going to be uh, to be expected. So they were always starting with drinking and so on and, and telling stories. And, and uh, I mean, I was just sitting there totally, totally shy and uh, not not knowing what what will happen. And then I went to, to Dessau. Dessau is in uh, Sachsen-Anhalt between between uh, Berlin and, and Leipzig. Pretty, pretty well known and famous for Bauhaus. So I arrived at, at the train station. The, the, the trucks were already waiting for us, and then pff, I was shouted, starting, uh, shouting started. And then uh, I, I found, uh, and then then they, they 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 called the names. Then they put us on the on the truck, and then we said, okay, the truck is full. Then the driver started uh, uh, um, and and braked pretty hardly, so everybody was falling over each other. And then he just said, okay, there's enough room. What, what do you complain? So this was the beginning. And this already uh, gave a good hint what what was coming the next six weeks. Because uh, six, week, six weeks in Dessau, uh, I underwent the basic drill. And uh, we were stationed. Um, so this was the radio uh, reconnaissance uh, regiment huh, in Dessau, uh, based in a... Um, in the old Junkers, you know Junkers with, with the Junker 52. So uh, the Junkers administration building, big seven, eight story building. I don't with, with an airfield uh, directly uh, close to the to the building. So we underwent this basic drill. The first thing was uh, taking uniforms, going to the to the hair hair cutter. So we got all a new haircut and uh, yeah, and then taking photos and so on. And then then the, the the drill began, and to be honest, what I remember, I mean, we were constantly running, constantly running for breakfast, during breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, uh, uh, drill. We were running all these 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 um, uh, uh, airfield runways up and down. By the way, this um, this was one of the first runways which was heated. That means you have all the the the, the heating uh, tubes under the runway but of course this was all gun uh, it was not uh, under operation anymore so and 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 you had these holes and uh, during night we were running and then we just heard somebody screaming because he fall in, in into a hole i mean pff, we knew that it will be hard but i didn't expect it hard like that i mean it was, i was in, in in a good physical condition so i i didn't bother I was able to to cope with that, huh? but the, the the psychological drill, huh? and uh, we had quite quite a lot of of uh, uh, let's say sadistic um, uh, drill drill sergeants huh? who had really had fun treating us like like shit, huh? so uh, 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 forcing us to 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 clean the toilets with our toothbrushes and. Uh, and, uh, and then I remember they called it Carnival. Huh? And um, so quite a lot of times, all night long, we had to dress up in all kinds of uniforms that we had. Uh, then, then they uh, to make up the, the beds, then they, they destroyed the beds, then, they, then they, they, they throw out everything from the wardrobes. You had to, 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 to reassemble it in, within five minutes. Then again, summer uniform, winter uniform, mixed, whatever. So they're really terrible experience because you can't do anything against that. Huh? And, uh, or drill on the, on the, during the night uh, uh, with, with a gas alarm. Then you had to, to put on the, these NBC suits with this terrible East German uh, gas mask with the small ho eye holes, always clocked. You can't see anything. 
then you had to rob about about the lawn and 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 the mission was to collect mushrooms i mean we were there in november of course there were no mushrooms and the one who who were able to find the mushroom okay he could rid he was able to get rid of the suits but nobody of course nobody found mushrooms uh, pure i'm mean, not sure if it, if it is the same in other armies if you watch um, american movies uh, and uh, whatever but but it was kind of sadistic uh, and uh, so i was happy when these six weeks were over and we were told finally told where we will end up for the next uh, ne next almost three years and wow that that seems really brutal training there appreciate you sharing that um were you doing any specific weapons training yes 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 but but solely on the on the on the ak-74 so this was part part of the of the training yeah yeah shooting and uh yeah with, with the kalashnikov where are you uh posted to yeah and then then uh i mean uh after the six weeks, uh, we were told where we will end up, and I was posted to a little little town in the south western corner of uh, East Germany called Zellamelis, near Zul. Uh, yeah, not not really close to the border, but in the outer south uh, western corner of, of East Germany, and um, and there I ended up in a in a in a company, I guess. I don't remember 70, 80, 90, 90 um, uh, army army people there on the top of the hill in the middle of nowhere. Uh, the, the hill was called Schwarzer Kopf, Black Hat. And uh, from the train station in, in Zellamelis, it was a restricted area. We had these, these restriction signs, also these restriction posts for the, for the military liaison missions. Maybe we come later on to that. To that uh, oh we will <laughs> we will don't worry <laughs> definitely and yeah so uh, going from this uh, train station uh, uh, up to the hill it took about well, it was five and a half kilometers so m more than one hour so and um, I mean I went this way so many times uh, up and down and uh, later on uh, when we were already uh, um, uh, promoted to 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 the NCO, we were we were allowed to have uh, private mopeds with us. So I was a little bit more mobile. So what was the the role of this place? What was it for? The role of this place was a sort of outpost of the Central Regiment in Dessau, and um, there were three types of of uh, radio reconnaissance uh, uh, task to do there the first was uh, the the reconnaissance of the um, the surface to to missile um, batteries like patriots nike hercules um, uh, improved hawk and and so on these kind of surface to to air missile systems the second was uh, the um, uh, i don't i don't know the the, the, the correct uh, english word that the, the the tracking of the of the, the the air traffic, tracking of all the the NATO planes uh, going around in West Germany or in in in, in West Europe, and the third one was uh, the the radio transmission. So the on 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 FM bands, the yeah what 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 the pilots and the ground control were were talking. So three tasks, and. Um, when I came there after the six weeks, I still was a was an uh, NCO student, and I was assigned to be the one who who is coordinating the um, uh, this surface to missiles uh, radio direction findings. So I was coordinating one guy just uh, being outside in the in this uh, little box of the of the radar uh, container and. Uh, and then we had uh, some other outposts in the middle of East Germany and in the north. And then uh, we were working uh, together with the with the Czech army. So they also had on a hill called Dillon. They also had the outpost there. And from these uh, direction findings, I was calculating this triangular or via yeah, this triangular drawings, the position of the of these these uh, ground radar stations of Patriot and and Hawk and so on, and then I did this for the next two years. 
presumably you lived up there because it was yes so yes. far away from anywhere yeah, yeah 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 we were we were stationed there we had to live there at the beginning we were allowed to go out just once in two weeks just for for an evening um going uh going home just once a month or once in six weeks it got better when 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 we were uh, when we were ncos then then we were able to go more frequently out during the the duties and uh, but actually uh, going home um, yeah once once a month let's say so and uh, and the the, the 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 living building was close to the service building just 20 meters and uh, I remember we had harsh winters there. Huh? I mean, it's in the Thuringian forest, harsh winters, a lot of snow, and uh, the, the the whole the whole peak of the hill was uh, fenced with a double fence with high voltage and uh, and sentries and uh, yeah, I also did quite a lot of these these sentry duties. With with good weather conditions, with good visibility, <laughs> we were able to see our yeah, so-called enemies on the other side of the fence uh, because we had a direct view from our hill to Wasserkuppe. Wasserkuppe is pretty close on the on the on the western side of the of the border, and uh, and there the 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 American army and the, the Bundeswehr they also had uh, reconnaissance stations. And we were able to see this this radum balls um, and uh, with a with a with a binoculars, yeah, you were e e even able to see them when they, when they raised the flag in the morning, but only with good visibility. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And I guess they did the same. Huh? They, they did the same. Absolutely. I mean, it was almost like a mirror image, wasn't it? This hill or this this um, this post uh, plays later on a role. Yeah, you've got a great story later yeah. on. We're tantalised yeah. people with that. Uh, yeah. It's one of my favourite stories, actually, mm -hmm. this, this one that, that you've got in here. But there's so many good stories that we've got. Um, so what was sort of like your day daily life like then for you? What time were you, you know, when were the, I presume the shifts were 24 hours. So you had to do nights and days. and Yes, I sorts. mean, we were on duty. We were on, uh, listening 24-7. So, the, the 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 whole system was was uh, designated to be on duty twenty four seven. For us personally, or for me personally, that meant uh, we had eight hour shifts. So we had a, we had a, a morning shift uh, starting at four a.m. to twelve, then eight hours free time, which of course you needed for for get some sleep. So uh, free time from twelve to 8 p.m. in the evening and then starting again from 8 p.m. till 4 in the morning and then so and 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 this risen we did for yeah, let's say two two and a half week and then we had one week off but not one week off under the palms or on the beach one week off just meant you had the regular service being sentry being uh, in the kitchen uh, making studies whatever and um so that that was the reason, huh? two and a half, three weeks of this uh, eight 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 shifts and one week, uh, yeah, regular service. Yeah. Yeah. Did did you find the work interesting or not? Well, I mean, I I was raised to do what I'm, I have to do, and um, I mean, actually, for me, it was better than than being in the tank or being in trenches or laying around and and running uh, in in the, in the mud so i had a warm place and uh, i mean it was intellectually it was not really demanding i mean it was every day it was the same i mean there were certain moments really of excitement uh, mostly when when um, when they had the, the spring or or the nato Undertook the, the the spring or autumn maneuvers like Sim, Simtex and Simtex and Wintex and all these X X maneuvers, and so this was a pretty uh, yeah an excitement because they were moving out these, these Patriot systems and and so on mo moving around and this was something different and uh, yeah actually I I remember some 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 highlights so for instance. We were close. I mean, this was a, uh, on on one floor. This was a restricted area, just with 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 uh, access control, and we were close to the other guys who were listen listening to the to the uh, radio transmissions 
and and tracking the uh, the, the the planes and so for instance if they got a signal of the b52 that was a big alert huh? that was a big thing Ooh, b52 in the air Ooh. we were told okay the b52 they can carry the nuclear bombs and at that time if they are in the air you don't know you what to expect huh? b52 or tr1 and so on then my 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 comrades who were listening to the to the voice traffic uh, they had sort of uh, japanese scanners uh, broadband scanners pretty small aor is is uh, is the print if if someone want to google it aor uh, communicators and uh, pretty modern and really with a with a broad frequency range and uh, this frequency range also covered the, the 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 mobile phone net, which was at that time built up in West Germany. Yeah? The so-called C nets, C net. Actually, we were not really forbidden, but it was not our task to listen to the guys uh, uh, talking in their cars to their wives. Yeah? But of course, this was interesting stuff. We were able to do it. Why don't do it? So, and uh, I mean, this was a little bit. Um, yeah, out out of, of of our task, but for the rest, I mean, pff, duty hmm? all day long. And by the way, these these Japanese scanners, because these were more or less the only ones, uh, only Western Western techniques that we had. Uh, we had one computer from Robotron, an East German computer, and later on I found out that these uh, scanners we had I don't know four or five of them. They were purchased in 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 Panama. In the in the in the duty free trading zone through dark channels, let's say, and uh, yeah, this these were the, the piece of of Western technology that we had. The rest was Russian, Czech, and Hungarian. You said that you, when you became an NCO, you did have some some free time. Did you? I mean, did you see any of the locals around, or you were I completely isolated? No, of course, on, 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 on that hill, we were completely isolated. There were no civilians around. But uh, uh, we used to, to go to Seoul, the next big city, Bezirksstadt at that, at that time, or to Zellamelis. And uh, I mean, we went out there. We went out for, for dinner. We went out for disco. We went out for cinema. Uh, we went out for theater. And, uh, but... Pff, to be honest, most of the time we went out for drinking, <laughs> and um, so uh, of course, and uh, with, with 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 my comrades, I mean, we went there, and uh, I mean, we were we were obliged to wear uniforms. They were controlled. If you had uh, if you have a nice nice haircut, if your uniform was in shape, if your hat was okay, and so on. So we were obliged to go out in uniform. Uh, but we didn't like it uh, because, pff, I mean, looking for girls around, I mean, they were not really keen for the for the for the East German guys in uniform. Huh? So, and uh, for that, uh, almost everybody of us had civilian clothes somewhere hidden. So they were completely forbidden in the in the barracks or in the uh, or in the um, yeah in the barracks. So we were not allowed to bring it in. So we hadn't any civilian clothes. So where to store your civilian clothes if you don't want to to go around in in your in your ugly uniform? Huh? And uh, in the train station in 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 Zellamelis, there were these these luggage lockers in the, in the train station. Not many, ten boxes. And uh, we used to use these uh, these uh, uh, luggage lockers to store our civilian clothes. But of course, you had to pay money, fifty cent, and then it lasted for twenty four hours. And but of course, I mean, we were not able to come back for twenty four hours and and to put in another fifty fifty penny uh, coin. And uh, but but we all shared the same lockers. Uh, three four people shared the same lockers for for uh, uh, keeping the, the civilian clothes. And if the lockers were running out. At least we had some friends in the, uh, working in the train stations who were taking the clothes, and then we were going there. Listen, the locker is empty. Uh, do you have my 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 bag with the clothes? And then they gave it to us. And uh, I guess everybody, or even the officers, they knew it, but but it was more or less tolerated. So because for us it was important, uh, as in, even if we are 
if we were going out in uniform, in Seoul there was uh, the big uh, the big college for the, the the officers' college for the for the border uh, border troops, huh? so officers Hochschule. And uh, and of course we never wanted to end up in the same pot uh, 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 like like these officer uh, students huh? because we were NCOs, we were not the ones who were uh, signed who who signed in for 25 years. So we didn't want it to end up. But at the end of the day, I mean, for the civilian, they, they couldn't distinguish uniform is uniform. And um, so, yeah, we, we, we tried to to, uh, to avoid uh, being out in the uniform. And uh, But we, we did uh, nice trips. I mean, we were allowed to, we had to be back at least at six in the, six in the morning. Um, and uh, so we went by... By oh, one day we went by train to Miningen, which, which was pretty close to the border, and went to a disco there in Seville. But then we missed the last train back, huh? and uh, yeah, I mean it was far away, no way to get home, also earlier, and uh, and <laughs> then then we were hiding or we were sleeping in the church. Huh? Church was open. So we were we were taking shelter for the rest of the night, and then we took the first train, and then uh, tried to excuse somehow that some I don't know, and uh, yeah, a lot of these 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 stories, or uh, um, or we went uh, if we didn't get, go out with the mopeds because we were drinking, and uh, you can imagine, and so we took the taxi, huh? and uh, usually the taxi drivers they dropped us. Uh, uh, um, down at the road, and then we, in in our state, our trunk state, we had to go up for for this five and a half kilometer. Nobody was in the mood for that. There were wild pigs uh, around, so it was pretty scary during the night. And then we, we usually try to 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 pay the ta taxi driver the double, or here you get twenty or 50, thirty marks more, and you drive us up to the to the hill. And some of them were afraid. Some of them were taking the money, so they were driving us up in this big Volga cars, six people plus driver in this Volga cars. And and uh, yeah, and I remember. Uh, so we had we had the gate, and before a gate there was a long bend uh, and and uh, big or uh, many trees around, and we we told them just go to the bend, and then we walked the rest. And then he was he was uh, breaking, but. But these workers, they had these squeaky brakes, so it was everybody could hear it that someone is coming in the, in the middle of the night. So and uh, yeah, and, uh, so we told them, okay, uh, one kilometer before you can drop us off, and, and then we walk the rest. So, <laughs> but it cost us quite a lot of money for for the convenience. <laughs> Were there any restrictions on what radio or TV? you could listen or see uh, in our rooms we were allowed to have radios but no no tv sets there was one central room where we were able to watch uh, television and i also remember every monday at i don't know half past 9 uh, we ha we were forced to to watch the the, the, the black channel the famous uh, the, 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 uh. Uh, the notorious Schwarze Kanal, uh, Schwarze Kanal yeah. from from Schnitzel, which was, I mean, if you if you want to 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 watch uh, black and white propaganda, then watch out for this. And so th there was one central uh, TV room, and uh, but on our rooms, I mean, we were four people in one room and and with one radio. And uh, the the law was. You were only allowed, of course, only allowed to to listen to to East German radio channels, and to enforce that, uh, we had to mark uh, the, the the frequency on uh, of of the East German um, uh, East German uh, radio stations with with a strip on on this frequency band on the on that window. Huh? So everybody had to do it, and uh, and once. You got a control, or an officer came into the room, and you heard, listened to music. He saw this this sort of uh, frequency needle, this movable needle. If it was on one of these two, three strips that you marked uh, uh, before, then everything was fine. But of course, we didn't listen to to East German radio. We listened to 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 West German radio. We were so close to the border, mostly uh, 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 
uh, to the Bavarian radio station Bayern 3 and, uh, and then a new one popped up, Antenne Bayern at that time. So we were all listening, but we were not allowed to. So what to do? Okay, the freaks under us, they, they tweaked the radio. So uh, the, 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 the needle was still on these strips, but, but uh, they, 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 they tweaked the, the relays, whatever. So we were listen to, listening to, to, um, uh, to the West German uh, radio. And, uh, and then the, the, the more sophisticated nerds, they, they manipulated the radio that in the moment the door opens, it immediately jumps to an East German channel. Huh? So it was wired from the radio to the door. And uh, I'm not sure at the end of the day, I mean, it's so obvious. Uh, I guess officers tolerated, they didn't want it to see it sort of mixture huh? because the, the, this, this post where, where I was stationed at the end of the day, we were all specialists and we had to work with, with the officers. So we, we worked hand in hand. So there was a sort of gentleman agreement, not too, too hard, but, but not, not really treating us uh, like, like a different class. Huh? So we were living, or we found a way to live together. Yeah, so they gave you some latitude. Yeah, some, some small decrees of freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and turned a blind eye to uh, certain behaviors. Did you have sort of specific rules about disposing of paper? you know, data you had on paper or anything like that. So you had a separate bin, I'm presuming, or a separate place where confidential paper would go. So so we were not allowed to take any papers out of this this uh, restricted uh, um, so service building floor. Of course not. And uh, I guess from time to time, they, they also searched our, our, our bags. When, when we when we went there with a bag with, with some some sandwiches and so on, so that was clear. Uh, uh, no paper out of this uh, of this floor. Huh? So, and of course we we, we followed that. But, uh, and I guess I guess uh, I know why why you are asking. So no chance for the for the for the the Prixmas and the US MLM guys to to dig into our <laughs> into our shit. Let's say. Yeah, to yeah, find something. I just listened to that to that Brixmith uh, podcast. Yeah. yeah, that was the direction that that question yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, was yeah. was going. That well, you know, while we're here talking about Brixmith, were you warned about their activities, and did you have precautions that you had to take? Absolutely, absolutely. So this was at least I don't remember right, but at least uh, once in the half year we were we were. Uh, told uh, how to react in case uh, of a so-called MLM alarm, military liaison mission alarm. And we're going to have to leave it there, so you'll have to wait till next week to see how Thomas's unit dealt with those pesky military liaison missions such as Bricksmiths. Don't miss the episode extras such as videos, photos and other content. Just look for the link in the podcast information. The podcast wouldn't exist without the generous support of our financial supporters, and I'd like to thank one and all of them for keeping the podcast on the road. The Cold War Conversation continues in our Facebook discussion group. Just search for Cold War Conversations in Facebook. Thanks very much for listening, and see you next week.